Good morning, world. Good morning, Freedom Church youth. Good morning, young men and young women, young kings and young queens, as I like to address you. I salute you this morning. Today's a good day to have a good day, but not just a good day. But we going to have a God day. That's right. I want you to wake up today and make sure that you stay focused, that you are encouraged, that you understand you have an assignment. And that assignment is to represent the K-I-N-G and the K-I-N-G D-O-M. I want to bless you this morning. Today happens to be March the 17th, March the 17th, 2022. Can you believe it's that time? Time for you to wake up and stay focused. First Timothy, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse, one verse, I want to throw you away. And I want you to hear what I got to say, because I want to encourage you today as it relates to you being a young person. Let's see what the scripture says first. First Timothy 4 and 12, peep this. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Then it says, instead of letting somebody look down on you because you're young, the Bible says, set an example for the believers in your speech, in your conduct, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. That's 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Let me ask you a quick question. As a young person, do you ever feel that just because you're young, some people don't take you seriously? I remember feeling like that when I was young, which is probably why when I was a young person, they said I was too serious. I didn't laugh a lot, I didn't joke a lot because I wanted people to take me serious because I had a lot on my mind. I had a lot of thoughts, I had a lot going on in my head and I wanted to be taken seriously. And sometimes people didn't take me seriously because of my age. And you might even think that because you're young that you don't have much to offer anybody else that you just should go somewhere and be quiet because you really can't make a difference that you should go somewhere and be quiet because you can't make an impact because you're not an adult you can't make an impact because you don't have this that or the other you can't make an impact because you're a young person and i need to tell you that is really the opposite of the truth the truth is your youthfulness is a gift that makes you extremely valuable. You say, are you serious, Pastor Troy? Does my youth really make me extremely valuable? I kid you not. Throughout the Bible, there are several famous men and women that we read about in the Bible, and we don't even realize that as we're reading about them doing amazing things in scripture, that they're teenagers. They're young boys and young girls who are being used by God. For example, you've heard the story about David and Goliath. I know we all have. David fights this giant on the battlefield and the giant's name's Goliath and David defeats Goliath. But did you know that researchers say that David was probably 17 years old when he fought Goliath? Whoa, 17, a teenager fighting this bohemian, this giant of a man, and he won the victory because God was on his side. At 17 years old, David loved God. At 17 years old, David repped the kingdom and the king, and God used him in a mighty way. But then you can chat your slide on over to John 6 and 6 for another young person that made the historical books of the Bible and made a powerful impact at a very young age. In John chapter 6, Jesus uses the lunch of a young boy, the lunch of a young boy, to feed 5,000 people. Jesus takes his lunch and multiplies it and his lunch becomes a miracle and he was just a young boy. Here's what's beautiful about John 6 and 6. That young boy could have said no, but instead he said yes to Christ. Oh my God. I want to encourage every young person today to understand something, that your youthfulness makes you an MVP. Your youthfulness makes you a very important person in the world, not just the kingdom of God. You're a very important person in the world, which is why everybody's after you. Advertisers are after you. The world is after you. You know, the devil's after you. Why? Because you're an MVP. Everybody wants you to represent them because your youthfulness, oh, it's a gift. But I need you to make sure you put God in the mix and let God have an opportunity to use your life as well because God will bless you. God will compensate you way better than anything or anybody else 
that wants to use your youthfulness. What you have got to do is you've got to not despise your youthfulness. Let me say this to every young person out there. Love your youthfulness. Some of you are in a hurry to be grown. Some of you are in a hurry to be an adult. And I get it. There are a lot of benefits that come with being adults. But there are a lot of things that come with adults that a lot of young folks don't think about or don't know about. The responsibilities are multiplied. The things you have to do are increased. So I want to encourage you today, if you're a young person, number one, enjoy your youth. Because as they say, youthfulness is fleeting. What does that mean, Pastor Troy? Well, it simply means you're not going to be young your whole life. Might surprise some of y'all. I used to be young. <laughs> I'm still youngish in my mind, but I am 50 plus years old. And uh, I remember the day when I was 16. I remember when I was 11. I remember the youthful days of my time. And I confess to you, when I was young, I was chomping at the bit to be older. When I was young, I wanted to be an adult. When I was young, I couldn't wait to be grown. Now, if I had a chance to do it all over again, I would have appreciated my youthfulness a whole lot more than I did. So I want you to slow your roll. I want you to understand you are important and I want you to understand that you matter. See, your youthfulness is valuable to God. And every day, every single day, young people, you have multiple opportunities to extend God's love and God's kindness to everybody you see. Every day you have multiple opportunities to make a difference with what you have, no matter how small it may seem. Remember the little boy with the little lunch? God took his little lunch and multiplied it, fed 5,000 and peeped this. Then God gave him the leftovers. Woo. See, that's what happens when you let God use your life. That's what happens when you tell God yes and not no. That's what happens when you surrender to the will of God. God will multiply your minuscule. He'll multiply the little that you have and you'll be glad you told him yes. I'm so glad I told him yes. I tell him yes every day. Understand, as a young person, I want you not to miss your opportunities in life. You have multiple opportunities to say no or multiple opportunities to say yes to Christ. Pastor wants to encourage you. Say yes to Christ. I promise you, God will do amazing things in your life. Timothy tells us specifically in Scripture, we read it earlier, that he wants us and I'm talking about God wants us to set an example for others, not only in how we talk, but how we act, how we love others. He wants us to set an example in our faith. But don't miss this. Timothy says that God wants us to set an example in our purity. And I want to encourage you as a young person not to be ashamed of your purity. I want to encourage you as a young person to hold your head up. If you're living for God, if you are preserving yourself, if you're keeping yourself and you're not out here in these streets and not letting everybody put their hands on you and you have a, a mindset that says, you know what, I am somebody, I'm not trash, I'm treasure, and you're not going to handle me like that because I am a child of God. I want to encourage you to hold your head up because God wants to use your purity as a powerful example of his presence in a young person's life. Know today that God is calling you to be an example, young people. And he's calling you to be an example to your friends. He's calling you to be an example to your family. And he's even calling you to be an example to those adults who are around you. Now, you want to tell me that you're not important? I'm telling you, you are very, very important. I think of it this way as I get ready to close, young folks. You are like a candle. Yeah. Imagine a candle. And imagine God is the flame. Oh, that's good right there. You are what? You are the candle and God is the flame. I want you to know that your life is that candle. Your behavior is that candle. Your attitude is that candle. And I want you to understand this, that you should let your light shine so that others will see and feel God's goodness inside you. You're not just a kid. Absolutely not. You're a candle. Let God light your candle. Let God light your life so that everywhere you go, people can see, people can hear, and people can understand that the God in you is absolutely amazing. And because God is in you, you are powerful.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day that you've allowed us to see. And as we journey throughout this day, we declare it will be a great day. It'll be a good day, but it'll also be a God day. Bless every young person and whatever challenges they face. Remind them that they are your candle and you are their flame. And that with you, all things are possible. And with you, they can shine bright in this ever-increasing dark world. In the name of Yeshua Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> in the words of Bishop DJ Callen, another one. All right, we got to go. You guys have a blessed day and know that I love you. Know that I'm praying for you. And I look forward to seeing you when I see you. Until then, make sure that you do what is right. Make sure that you stay focused. And you make sure you don't let anybody or anything put you on the wrong track because your life is important. Your life matters. And you are somebody, not because I said it, but because God said it. Have a blessed, amazing day.